This is part four of warning signs, warning signs. And um, I don't know how long I'm going to go on this series. I only had two sermons planned, but it looks like I may go round five. I don't know. Um, but anyway, while we're here, we're going to have some church. Amen. Um, I titled this, of course, warning signs. But if I had a subtitle, I guess it would be the anchor holds. Um, how many of you came believing today that God's going to do something? No, seriously, I mean, you walked in, I mean, I heard people say, man, do you feel that? And I love when I hear people say, do you feel that? And I heard people say, what was it? And it's like, the spirit from the first service flowed into the second service, and here we are today having church, amen? Because I can, I don't know about, I can feel my God. I don't have to always hear him, but boy, I can feel him. And that's, that's what I'm talking about today, so the anchor holds, and how many of you know that, that God is a knot tire, a rope holder, and he's the anchor for your soul? There's a lot of things in this world that's going to let go of you, but I promise you, listen to me, it, God will never, ever, ever, everybody say never, ever. He'll never, ever let go of you. Never, ever. You say, Brian, I've got some things wrong in my life. Do you think you shot God? Do you think you're so big and so intellectual that you do something God don't know? Why did God die? He died because of sin of the world. See, it wasn't the nails that held him on the cross. It was the love that held him on the cross. When he looked at you, he said, man, they're worth it. They're worth investing in. They're worth me dying for. So you're in a good house today. We believe in the power. We believe in the evidence of God. We believe that God manifests himself and still uses his gifts today. We believe that from Genesis to Revelation, everything remains the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I wish I had somebody in here that helped me preach this a little bit. We believe it all. Nothing died out. Nothing's dead. So listen to him. No matter how big your storm is, God's got you. No matter what circumstances you're facing right now, God's got you. No matter what your bills look like, God's got you. No matter what, God has you. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18 through 20. If you're there, say amen. Love you guys. I'm so happy you're here. If you're a guest, we apologize. We do not apologize for the way the Spirit works here. I say that quite often because people come in shock mode. They say, i never seen nothing like that. We just believe the Bible. Verse 18, Hebrews chapter 6. There, say amen. amen. Good deal. Turn your neighbor and say, the anchor holds. Amen. All right, here we go. Verse 18, God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which is it is impossible, watch me, it is impossible for God to lie. He will not, he cannot he shall not ever lie. So if your life is a mess, let me go ahead and tell you. Go to the Word. Go to the Word. The, the Word will set you free. The Word will help you. The Word will help establish your ways because God is not a liar. If God told one lie, watch this, we're all hell bound. But God is not a liar. So when he said he died, he died. When he was in the grave for three days, he was in the grave for three days. I don't debate that stuff. God said it. That, that settles it. That's it. He's, he's right, and you watch this. Most people, everybody else is wrong. Everybody else is wrong. So watch this. Here we go. He said, I, he, God cannot lie. He who had fled to take hold of the hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged. Today, I really believe God wanted me to give you an encouraging word. God is an encouraging God. Don't listen to somebody. If somebody come up to you and say, I want to give you a prophetic word, and they give you a death warrant. That is not prophecy. That is not prophecy. Prophecy, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, is to build up and to encourage and to bless God's people, not to ever hurt God's people. It's always to bless, encourage, and build up God's people. Amen? Verse 19, we have this hope as in what? For the what? I have a hope called Jesus Christ. He's my anchor for my soul. Watch what it says. Firm and what? He's firm. When the storm comes, he's firm. He's secure. You may be a mess, but he's not. He's firm and he's secure. And watch this. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, behind the veil where Jesus is. It, my anchor goes past the curtain into the Holy of Holies 
and my anchor wraps around Jesus' feet, and wherever Jesus goes, I go. See, it ain't, it ain't me dictating God, me saying, God, I'm going to do this. It's God saying, no, 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 no. I am the anchor. You are wrapped at my feet. And where I go, you shall go. We don't do nothing. He does it all. Amen? He does it all. He builds the churches. He buys the seats. He builds the sanctuaries. He puts food on your table, clothes on your back, pays your bills. He does it all. Somebody praise him. He does it all. He holds you together when everybody else lets go. He's God. And he's worth it all. Hallelujah. He's worth it all. Every bit of it. He's the one that does it. He's the anchor. I didn't do nothing. I didn't build this church. Y'all are not here for me. You're not here for this praise team. You're here because God drug you by the feet to church today. Hallelujah. You say, well, my alarm clock woke me up. Well, good luck there. He controls the electric. If your alarm clock goes off, you got something in you called the Holy Ghost alarm clock that'll wake your butt up and get you in church. Amen? I know it's not good English, but hallelujah anyhow. Amen? He'll wake you up. He'll set you up. See, God's good about setting his people up for the blessing. That's what God wants to do. He wants to bless you. Listen to me. God wants to bless you. He's not here to curse you. He wants to bless you. He says it's for Jesus who went before us. Watch this has entered on, where it says our, put, put my. He entered death on my behalf. He died on my behalf. So when Jesus died, it made me alive. Watch this. He has become a high priest just for today. Well, he's just a high priest when I need him. No. Whether you like it or not, he's God. No matter what happens, he's God. No matter what kind of lies is in your mind right now, he's God. No matter what's going on in your family, he's God. And I'm telling you, with, listen, one thing that the churches have missed out on, they think they dictate stuff. We don't, guys. We are anchored to the feet of God, and God will take us where we need to be. He says, in order of the, the high priest, Melchizedek. The scripture says the anchor for our soul, listen to me, is connected to what is behind the curtain. Listen to me. The Bible says that our anchor is connected to what is behind the veil, behind the curtain. You remember in the Old Testament they had a tabernacle. Y'all remember the tabernacle, right? Say, I got you, preacher. Don't die on me, okay? Let me teach this for a moment. They had a tabernacle. In that tabernacle, there was a curtain. There was a big, thick curtain. Some scholars say it's anywhere from 8 to 12 inches thick, this curtain was. That curtain represented the law. In other words, you had to have a high priest go behind the curtain once a year to, to take care of your sins. There was two lambs that they had to kill. One would go on the altar to sprinkle the blood for the sacrifice. I'm going quick, but hang with me. The other one would be called an escape goat. They would sprinkle the blood over the goat, and they would say, yeah, and that old goat would go out into the wilderness. And what God was saying, that no matter if you're in the wilderness, no matter if you're at a dead end, no matter if you're going the wrong way, no matter if you hit a stop sign, you're still under the blood. You're still under the blood. Isn't that a good word? That no matter where you're at, see, it's not you, it's God in you. You say, well, my, I got a big old sin. Yes, it does, but it's under the blood. So no matter if you're in the wilderness, no matter if you're going the wrong way, do not enter, yield in your life, you're, you're under the blood. That's what I can't get, I don't understand why people don't understand that the blood is more powerful than a sin. It's more powerful than a sin. So listen to me, you're, it says your soul is tied to an anchor that's tossed behind the curtain, and notice this, it's tied to the Ark of the Covenant. Now listen to me, let me teach this for a moment, can I teach you just for a moment? There was three things that were in the Ark of the Covenant. Three things. Everybody say three things. One of them was manna. Manna. Manna, you remember when the children of Israel was in the wilderness? We're talking about the wilderness a lot today, but hang with me. They were into the wilderness. But God says, I want you to put manna in the Ark of the Covenant to let them know, let them realize that no matter where you're at, if you're in the wilderness, my God will still provide. My God will still provide. No matter where you're at, even though they was in the wilderness for 40 years, every day, Sarah, every single day, they had to go out and say, Lord, is that bread going to fall today? Bread would fall from heaven. You say, Brian, come on. 
bread would fall from heaven. See, we read that in the Bible that he done it for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But in the New Testament, God says, I am no respecter of person. If I've done it for them, Robbie, he'll do it for you. So if you're in the wilderness and you're at a do not enter in your life, God says, you're under the blood and I will provide for you. That's a good deep word, but it's a good word. The second thing was Aaron's budding rod. It was his staff. It was approximately six feet long. So the Ark of the Covenant was a big Ark of the Covenant. It took four men to carry the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant meant, listen, I've got to teach it. It means that's where the glory of the Lord rested. Listen to me. Very careful you get this point. Aaron's budding rod was an old stick, this old piece of wood. It was just a stick. It was dead. But when Aaron's budding rod was in the covenant, in the presence of God, it, bo- it bore fruit. It bore almonds. So listen to me. What God spoke into my heart, and even though some of you feel like you're dead, even though some of you feel like you're disconnected from God, but God wanted me to stop by this morning and say, as long as you are in the presence of God, you will bear fruit. As long as you are in the presence of God, you will live. As long as you are in the presence of God, you can do great and mighty things. But when you get out of the glory, out of the presence of God, you're nothing but a dead old stick. See, what I wrote down, dead things live in God's presence. I once was lost but now i'm found i once was blind but now i can see somebody can testify to that this morning i'm not i used to be on dead stick but boy when i got in the presence of god i started bearing fruit and not just a little fruit much fruit hallelujah i started doing things i didn't normally do on my own Woo! i don't know what y'all feel in this house but i feel the old dead stick rising (laughs) <laughs> Hallelujah. Dead things can't remain dead if they're in the presence of Jesus Christ. If, I get, if we get the glory of God to drop in this house, the old, old stress, the old depression, the old anxiety, the old cancer, y'all help me preach this morning, it won't stay because you're alive in God. Boy, let me tell you, if y'all believe this, if y'all just get this word today, it'll change you forever. It'll change your life. It'll change your actions. It'll change your mindset. I don't care how how messed up you are this morning. You're in a house that believes that dead things can come to life. You're in a place this morning that we believe that even though Lazarus' body stunk for four days, we believe that God showed up and said, get him out. Come forward. And dead things got up and come forward. And the clothes come off and God got up. We believe that after three days, a man named Jesus got out of the grave. We're in a house today, no matter where you're at. Watch me. No matter where you're at, no matter what's going on in your life, we believe that you can live. You can live. You can live today. Quit acting dead. You, 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 can't, you can't be dead with Jesus. People ask me all the time, I say, Brian, I don't understand why you get excited. I, I can't help it. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I got something in me. I, I'm just, I'm tore up right now. <laughs> Old saying like a can of kraut. That's what my granny used to say anyhow. I shake. I can't help it. My voice starts quivering. You know, it's this, it's this good down here. I can't imagine with no sickness, no disease. And I see what God can see. And I taste what God can taste. And we're all at the big banquet table. I guarantee we're alive then. Hallelujah. We're going to be alive. We're alive now. God says, I want my will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, God wants you guys to be prosperous and to be in health. God wants you guys to be encouraged by the Spirit of God. And God says, if you're dead, you can't be dead if you're in my presence. The last thing I'm trying to get through this is the Ten Commandments. That reminds me of all God's word and all of God's promises. So God is my provider. He's my healer. God says, I'm alive. And God says, now claim your promises. God says, my anchor is attached to my soul that is thrown through the, through the veil, through the curtain, attached to the Ark of the Covenant. Now everything I need is met and supplied by his riches and glory. Y'all getting this? I want you to get this in your spirit. So I've been alive for four decades. <laughs> it's hard for me to believe that, but I've been alive for four decades, over four decades, excuse me. 
some of y'all knew that. Y'all was already testing me. And I've realized we're living in some messed up times. I, I realize, you know, and you can too, we can't even tell the seasons apart anymore. Here it is, the end of July, and it was 65 degrees the other night. We know that the Word of God is established. We know that there's going to be a dying time. We know all these things. We know that there's killings and shootings and drugs. And the main drug in Camelsville right now is heroin. And I want to call that old spirit of heroin out of this county. Amen. We're going to take, listen to him, we're going to take this county back. Amen. But it's going to take you. It's going to take me. We're going to stand on the word of God. And we're going to cast them old demons back to hell where they came from. We can do it because we got God on our side. I've been around. But I thank God this morning that I tossed my soul my, that's tied to an anchor through the veil, through the curtain, and latched on to the feet of Jesus. You see, when you see me, you see Jesus. Hallelujah. And when I see you, I just don't see you. I see the Spirit of God living in you. You say, Brian, you don't realize how bad I am. I see Jesus. I'm not going to let this whole world lie to me no more. I know the hard times are coming. I realize that. We've all been down those dead-end roads, them wrong ways, no parking. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Yield. Don't, do not go there. We've all seen those signs before in our life. But this morning, I really felt God speaking to my spirit and tell, told me to tell you that he, Satan cannot pull you away from God. I really, he can't hurt you. He can't harm you. Because listen to me. He's not pulling you. He's trying to pull the anchor. And that anchor is attached to the cross. And that cross is attached to heaven. And I've never seen a demon in hell try to take heaven back. Amen? He can't do it. Matter of fact, the demon got cast out of, he of heaven. And now he's in hell. But I'm telling you today, I really believe nothing in this world can separate you from the love of God. Nothing, listen to me, I'm going to just get in your heart. Nothing in this world, I said nothing, can separate you from God. The anchor is Jesus. The anchor is Jesus. Jesus is connected to the cross. And today I really believe God spoke into my heart and said, Brian, listen to me, as long as you're going the right direction, as long as you're going towards God, nothing can take you away from me. Nothing, listen to me, as long as you're going that direction, as long as you're heading toward God, the only thing the enemy can take you out of is if you start going the wrong direction. There's a television program on called Deadliest Catch. Y'all ever seen that on television? Deadliest Catch. And these, this, this ship goes out in the middle of the ocean. The storms come. And they had a, an interview. And I, I, I record, we got this on our televisions. I had DVR so I could go back and hear what he said and go back and hear what he said and go back. DVR is really good for that. But the captain of the ship said once they toss the anchor, listen to me, the anchor holds. Once they toss the anchor, the anchor takes hold, and the only way to remove the anchor is to go the opposite direction. And what God spoke into my heart, the captain said, you have to go completely around the anchor to unlodge it. So when they drop that anchor, and listen to me, the anchor goes approximately 150 to 300 feet deep in the bottom of the ocean. It's no joke. It's deep, it's wide, and it hangs on. It just don't hit the bottom. Like Greg said, the cartoons, every cartoon he ever seen just hit the bottom and stayed there. It don't do that. It hits, it hits the bottom. <laughs> the bottom of the ocean divides. That anchor goes down, and it takes root. It, it sits down, and the only way to remove and dislodge that anchor is for that boat to go around, completely around, all the way around, and start tugging against that old anchor. And what God spoke in my heart, there's a lot of people that have been tugging against the anchor. There's a lot of people that's went all the way around. You went around the truth. You went around your circumstances. You went around the, the word of God. And here you are this morning at Elkhorn Baptist Church. You don't know why. Somebody just called you and invited you, but you really don't know why you're here. It's because God called you. Hallelujah. And so here you are this morning. And that old anchor has went down and it's deep in your soul. Deep down in you. And a lot of you hadn't seen the anchor for a long time. But that don't mean the anchor's not there. It goes deep. It takes deep root. And I'm telling you, the captain of that ship said, the only way 
is to circle all the way back around, back who you used to be, back with your old friends, back with your old bar scenes, back with your old drug usage, back way who you used to be. And when you start going back who you used to be, and you start tugging against that old anchor, eventually it's going to dislodge. Now listen to me. That does not mean you've fallen from grace. Because listen to me, it's always like a church mouse in here now. What that means, listen to me, even though they dislodge the anchor, it's still connected. Y'all got me? Even though you may be running against God and now his voice, his scream has become a whisper in your life. Here you are today, you're gone completely back to who you used to be. And boy, you're tugging, you're tugging. It ain't who you want to be, it's who you used to be. And now you're tugging and tugging, and that old anger has dislodged. And now, here's what's happening. You're back to who you used to be. But God wanted me to stop by and tell you guys this morning, listen to me. The anchor still holds. It's still attached. You can still feel the tug. I had people come to me, had one boy come to me this morning. He said, Brian, I'm not what I used to be. He said, oh, I want to be. I said, I'm glad to see you this morning. I'm glad to see tears coming down your face because that shows me you still feel the tug of the old anchor in your life. Isn't that good? You still feel the old tug. You still feel the Holy Spirit this morning tugging on your soul and sitting there going, don't do that, don't go there, and you've done gone all the way around, but the anchor still holds you. Isn't that good? Listen to me. So you got to hang on. That old captain said, if we remain still, and we remain steadfast, we will be unmovable. He says, once we anchor that anchor down in the ocean, the bottom of the ocean, and it goes 150 to 300 feet down in that ocean, if we remain steadfast, if I remain in the presence of God, if I remain in His Word, if I remain deep praise in me, that I'll, no matter how big the storm gets, no matter how big the waters get, no matter what my family does, where I'm at, who I'm with, the anchor will hold no matter what happens to me in my life. As long as I remain in the presence of God. Isn't that good? It will remain there. It will remain there. So God sent me here this morning, and I really believe this. To tell somebody here today that you've been going the wrong direction, wrong way. You've been circling around the old anchor, but the anchor still holds. He don't let go. He won't let go. You can't get away. I, I'm to a point in my life, even when I mess up, and I know I've messed up, boy, the Holy Spirit will start calling me and just say, Brian, you don't need to do that because the anchor holds. The anchor holds. If you've got that God conviction on you right now, you're in a good place. You're in a good house. Because we know that the anchor holds. See, nobody, I wrote this down, nobody loves you more than Jesus Christ. Nobody loves you more than Jesus Christ. And no matter where you're at, how far you're away, and I get in trouble, I'll get, I bet you this week I'll get five phone calls. Somebody will listen to this sermon, and they'll call me and say, well, you're preaching wrong theology. I'll get an email, and they'll go, I can't believe you're preaching wrong theology and wrong doctrine, this, that, and the other. The Bible says, Donna, in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18 through 20, I didn't write it. I just believe it. It says that God rent, tore the veil. Now we're not under the law, but we're under grace. And if grace can't hold me, nothing can't hold me. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. Woo! I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. I know some of you say, well, Brian... I've got big sin in my life. It will never outdo the cross. The big bad wolf will never beat the big bad cross. My God, what he started, he shall finish. He'll finish it. Hallelujah. I know that some of you here got some junk in your trunk. You got some things going on in your life. Your mind's a mess and your, your past. And you got a lot of things that went on in the past. But can I tell you, we could all make excuses. But I'm sitting and telling you today, today's a new day. Today, I want you to literally see your soul being tossed to Jesus Christ. And I want you to see that old, that old anchor go around his feet. And where God walks, that's where you go. Where God goes, that's where you go. Where God looks at, that's what you look at. You don't dictate nothing. Elkhorn Baptist Church does not dictate nothing. Thank God, God didn't leave it up to us. We, <laughs> could you imagine? Y'all just do it your way. Well, Lord, that, that would have really worked. We'd have had another tire of Babel. Language would have been all messed up and this, that, and the other. And 
had all kinds of things. But thank God that the anchor holds. Thank God that he won't let go. Thank God that I am chained, I am hooked to, I am anchored in something that's bigger than my sin. I am anchored in something that, that just won't let go of me. And I'm sorry that you think that your sin is bigger than the anchor. It's not. I'm sorry that you think your sin is bigger than, than, the, than the cross, but it's not. I'm sorry you think your sin is bigger than grace, but it's not. It's not. The anchor will hold. Praise Him, won't you guys to come? Even if I fall, even if I fail, the anchor holds. Even if I go the wrong way, the anchor holds. Now listen, this is a dangerous mess. I'm not telling you to continue on to do the, what you're doing. What I'm telling you is that the anchor is still Jesus. The anchor knew that when he died that there was going to be sin in the world. The anchor Jesus Christ knew when he was on the cross, you was on his mind. The anchor knew what kind of situation and mess that you'd be in right now. The anchor knows these things, but the anchor holds. No matter what, the anchor holds. You say, well, Brian, you don't understand. I've been going down the wrong way. The anchor holds. Brian, you don't understand. I've got sin in my life. The anchor holds. Brian, you don't understand. My marriage is falling apart. The anchor holds. Brian, you don't understand. These people are just making fun of me. They're calling me names. I've got all this going on. The anchor holds. No matter what, no matter what you're going through, the anchor holds. I want this to get in your spirit this morning because you are allowing the world in worldly situations, in worldly circumstances, and to allow the enemy to dictate your life. And I'm telling you today, the anchor holds. You didn't save yourself, and you can't lose yourself. The anchor holds. Sometimes I just think we're so Americanized. We're so Bible belt. We look at everybody else's junk. But I'm telling you today, no matter where you're at in this house right now, the anchor holds. No matter what your family looks like right now, the, the anchor holds. No matter what the doctor's report is, I'm telling you, yes, sickness may come and the enemy may come, but God will raise a standard up in those last days. The anchor holds. Here's a 100% fact. Everybody here is going to die. Fact. Unless the rapture takes place, Everybody here today, under my voice, you will die. And they're getting younger and younger and younger and younger. If you don't believe me, follow me for one week. Death does not come with a certain age. You don't know how long you're going to live. You don't know when you're going to take your last breath. So can I ask you a serious question? Why would you want a chance dying and going to hell when you've got an opportunity today to revive your soul, be hooked to an anchor, thrown over to the curtain, and be hooked to God? Why in the world? Don't take that chance, man. Woman, don't take that chance. Child, youth, don't take that chance. Well, I'm healthy. I buried one last month that was healthy. Well, I've got money and I tithe. I bury them all the time. I'm telling you. Y'all listen to me very carefully. The anchor still holds. Jim, no matter how the storm rages, no matter what comes against me, no matter what I look like, what I act like, what I smell like, where what side of the tracks I came from, I'm telling you this morning as a witness unto heaven and under God's anointing today, the anchor still holds in this house. He hold on. He won't let go. He's got you right now. What are you going to do about it? That's what I'm talking about. You say, Brian, boy, you get fired up. Yes, I do. Because listen, I'm tired of trying to, people try to make me lie at a funeral. I'm telling you.
time, y'all watch me. I'm not here to scare you. I can't scare you into heaven. God's the only one that can take you to heaven. But I'll preach the truth. When you take your last breath, from a young person to a baby to an adult, it's been determined. And today, no matter where you're at, what, what is it? The what? The anchor holds. The anchor, come on, talk to me. The anchor what? When the world will beat you down, the anchor. When people talk about you and mess you up, the anchor. I'm telling you, you got a God that will take you all the way to heaven because the anchor. Somebody give you praise in this house. Come on. Allison, he's not going to let go. My God, he's not going to let go, Tommy. My God, the anchor holds. No matter where you're at, if you're going down, do not enter, do not enter, don't go that way, don't. Listen to me. That old tug, that old tug, man, anchor's on you right now. What do you need to do? You need to yield. You need to yield and say, God, here I am. The anchor's going to hold. And if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know Jesus, you don't have an anchor right now. And I'm telling you today, you need to cross. Cross over. Be like that. You may be old dead sick this morning, but I pray that you come alive in this house today. Amen.